Welcome back! And today we are on 29th of August on a Monday. <laughs> we are running late at 11pm Eastern Standard Time. That translates to... Um, you are If you are in Asia, you should be on the 30th of August at 11.05am Singapore Asia Time. Thank you for joining us today. My apology that we are late for about 30 minutes. And I'll explain to you what happened just now. <laughs> Holy moly. Um, so let me turn on the chat chat and uh, let's see who's uh, joining us today. Welcome back. So I uh, good morning to JLo. I see you, Kelvin Wong and Wilson Wang. Uh, thank you for joining us. And if you are watching us live right now, please uh, go to the live chat chat <laughs> and, and let me know uh, you are here watching us. Wow, I... Um, I, I'm not supposed to start so late because right now my head is really spinning. <laughs> who, who is in the house today? Let's take a look. Okay, we have um, uh, John Lim just came in. Uh, Kinip, nice to see you. Ch uh, Chuman, James Chu, and uh, Jerrica. I think that's Jerrica. <laughs> Jeanette, Jacqueline, Ryan. Manfred, wow, so many of you. Very, very good to see all of you today. As well as John Tran and um, yes. So I was, um, how come there's a light down here? Let me see. Strange. Um, why is there a light in the middle of my screen? <laughs> Hang on a minute. Let me just check. Nope. I think that came from another light source. I'm not too sure. Oh, I, I think I know where it's from the top. Okay. So uh, today was, um, I was late because I was uh, talking to my um, my child's teacher. Wow, not just one teacher, three teachers in one go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How many of you, <laughs> you have uh, children going up and you have challenges of your child in the school and then you have to talk to the teachers. <laughs> Please let me know on the chat chat. <laughs> we are in the same boat. <laughs> so we talk uh, really, really long. 9.45 to uh, 11 o'clock. Wow. 9.45, 10.45. Uh, one hour, 15 minutes. Um, uh, three things I want to share about this this this. Um, um, parents giving teachers feedback about their child about their child in the school. All right, it's a very very difficult conversation. I think it's a very awkward conversation as well. Um, what do I mean by that? So, um, first of all, I uh, I want to make sure I I want to uh, convey correctly so that I I don't want to. Um, uh, send out the wrong message to all the parents and then all of you start going after the teachers in the school. <laughs> when does it warrant, maybe I should re uh, rephrase it this way, when does it warrant for us as parents to meet up with the teachers over issues related to our child in school? All right, when should we trigger this step? All right, I think that, that should be a better question to ask. So in my perspective, you know, I'm uh, so busy right here. But, you know, I will drop everything if anything happens to my child or my children. Uh, they are my first priority. So as parents, please recognize that your priority is number one, your child. So I drop everything and, and zoom in straight away. I want to address this issue. Now, what triggered, triggered this is because, very simple, three very important things to learn about. Number one... If you feel that your child has been bullied to an extent that he has no, no avenue to voice out, you must dive in to look at it. And this is very common among uh, troubled kids, right? Over a series of long period of time, they try to voice out. Why voice out? Because they got bullied. Now, bully can take place in many forms. And, you know, the traditional way we think about bully is someone punch you or you go back home with a black eye. No. In modern times right now, the bully is much more sophisticated. The bully can take place over WhatsApp, can take place over TikTok, can take place over um, various communication tools that's 
that's online. That's one form of bully. The bully also can take place in uh, classroom settings where they find fault with you and, you know, uh, make jokes about you and, and just make your life very, very difficult. All right? That's the second form of bully. And the third form of bully is very simple. They isolate you. That is a form of bully. All right? So, of course, for us as parents, we don't like step in just because, you know, you, you feel that your child has been bullied and then you, boom, straight step in to, to kind of uh, speak up for him. No, we don't do that. But if, if it's serious enough, now then, you know, I ask the teacher, when do you know how serious is serious? Which I'm also asking you as a parent, how serious is serious that you should step in, right? So my definition of serious is very simple. When I discover my child has no one to go to to voice out, that to me is very serious. All right, so uh, step one, we triggered that meeting with three of his teachers, not just one. I want to get as many teachers involved. And step two, during the meeting of the teachers, I lay my, my ground rules. I feel that certain steps taken by the school were not appropriate, lack of empathy, and you cannot say just because a parent's voice, voice out an opinion that you don't allow the child to, to bloom. I want to state it very clearly to all of you, and you all got to really listen this hard. Look, even adults today are facing mental health issues. What's more a child? I say and repeat one more time. Even adults are facing mental health issues. What's more, a child. So do not neglect that. You have to step in and look into what the heck is going on in the school, how the teachers are managing the issues, how about the classmates and the classmates, parents, you also have to look at it. It's an all-rounded issue that I'm talking about. So uh, I disagree with the teacher just now. He said that, you know, uh, you sh you. The, the, the parents shouldn't just step in like this and the child should learn how to adapt. The problem is this. Every child is different. You know, among my three boys, one of them is like the top school leader. He is the one managing all other students in the school. <laughs> all right. I mean, I mean uh, it's a blessing you have a child like that. But, you know, not all the same, not all the children are the same. Some child, some children need more time to bloom. And, and this is what I'm talking about. My, this particular child needs more time to bloom and he's not like as fast as the rest. And, and that's where problem happens. So never make an assumption every child is the same. Uh, that's where I feel it's appropriate the parents must step in and create room and uh, understanding among the different stakeholders from the teachers and uh, between the teachers and the parents and our own child to have a common understanding, lay out the ground rules. And I lay out my ground rules very clearly, right? So I mean, it's like, we tell you our child has this issue, you don't have empathy, I'm going to observe your subsequent steps. If you're still not tackling this pop issue properly, then I'll take over the issue. I've given you the chance, but if you are not listening, despite my kind reminder to all of you, then I'll take over. So uh, it's a very awkward conversation, but I'm glad the meeting uh, lasted and I think we have a happy conclusion out of it. So the key message. Do you know whether your child is suffering today and is he telling you about it? Or is he just keeping quiet, suffering in silence? Please find time to find out more. All right. So um, let me turn back on my chat again. Please find time to find out more. That is my message. So, um, and, 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 and for those of you who are parents or if you're not parent, but you got nephews and nieces, can you please respond? And all of us play some parts in the role of uh, 
just checking out, looking out for our child or our children. Make sure they are not bullied because, you know, uh, <laughs> I got, I mean, I got three boys. One of them is the one that bully others. And the other one is the one always get bullied. <laughs> kind of uh, challenging, right? So, hey, how come I got no response from all of you? Uh? Oi! Where's your response? I need to hear some response. <laughs> Where's my music gonna uh, put the music right now? Thanks. Hey! No response from the chat chat, huh? Wow, seriously? Uh, is it because you're not able to type or is there a delay? Hello, are you still there? <laughs> no response, huh? Uh, oh, finally come in already. Ryan, children grow up. Yes, ch children will eventually grow up, but the problem is every child is growing up at different speeds. Some grow up fast, some grow up slow. So the, the child that grow up faster than the rest will always be the bully. <laughs> okay, it's a law of Darwin, Darwinian law of nature. <laughs> J-Lo, I always got bullied in school, but I'm doing well right now. Yes. Uh, that's something, you know, if you are always bullied in school, are you aware of the fact that the psychology will carry on through your adulthood? And I encourage you all to read up different books on psychology. And this is uh, well documented. Uh, you have to address those, those childhood issues. And uh, I have my own childhood issues as well. Need to address that. And I remember clearly, I was bullied by... Uh, when I was in uh, primary school, I was bullied by this guy who grew up faster than the rest of us and I was bullied by him. And today he's a medical doctor practicing in one of the hospitals. And I wrote an email to him. I told him that, hey, you remember that time in primary six you bullied me? I'm telling you right now, you know, I still, some every now and then I talk about those times when you bullied me and he chickened out. He didn't dare to respond to me. It's okay because this will stay with him right now. I've communicated to him. I pass on the burden over to him. This will stay with him. By not responding to me, he's a coward. <laughs> All right. So uh, that's what I want to say. And of course, Jacqueline, always have time for our child, our children, even when they are grown up. Wow, well said, Jacqueline. Yes. You know, even if your, your child is like 30, 40, 50 years old, it's forever your child. It never ends. For us as, our, as the parent, our duty never ends. Even if they are grown up, you also have to speak to them. Right? So, uh, my father is like, every now and then will WhatsApp me, tell me this, tell me that. <laughs> and, yeah, and uh, my uh, Kelvin Wong is, uh, my children have grown up, no teacher parents meeting session anymore. Wow, very good. Very happy for you. There's no such session, but I triggered the session. <laughs> I'm the one who triggered it. All right. And Manfred, yeah, Manfred, thanks for, uh, yeah. So please speak to your children today. Carol Ong, you did the right thing. Yes, um, you know, Chinese is Renu Karen, you know. <laughs> and John Trent, a very serious subject. At worst case, lives are lost. We all should be on the lookout for children, family, and friends. It's not always evident that people are undergoing internal challenges. Yes, that's the that's the issue I'm I'm bringing up. And it, it is bad when a teacher says to the parents that let your child grow up on his own. Don't interfere. I said I said that is wrong. I don't agree with the logic. Because even adults need to be taken care of, not once more a child. Come on. And if I have to trigger a meeting with you, you got to know it's a red flag already. And I have to put it in very explicit terms that, hey, teachers, if you don't take control of the situation, I will take control. By the time I take control, not that I'm threatening you, it will turn ugly. <laughs> right? Because I will fight for my child. Right? And... um. And we always give the teachers the, the first, first hand to, 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 to be responsible, to have the, the chance to, to build the trust with the parents. But if 
if they are stubborn and don't want to change their ways, then I have to take take the next step. All right. So Derek, what uh, Derek is asking a question. Let me just try to see this. What needs to be done must be done else more from. Yeah, so that, that part, what needs to be done must be agreed between the parents and the teachers. And we kind of agreed on a certain framework. Uh, then everybody right now on high alert <laughs> because you've got a crazy father right here <laughs> coming in ready. <laughs> so it's on a high alert mode and I hope all will be well. The big summary for this is this. Let me just close off the chat. It's, uh, the big, big takeaway for me is uh, I recognize, I, you know, I got three boys. Uh, every one of my boy is growing up at different speed. And the one that is growing up as a, at the slower speed among the three is the one that I know needs a lot of help. So I requested, please give my child more time to grow up, to mature. Don't rush him to grow up. But, you know, he, he may be slow, he's... Um, but he has a very kind heart. You know, I'm very blessed. My boys have three of them very, very kind hearted. It's not like sometimes you hear the bullies in your children's school, right? And even though the, the boy or girl is young, but <laughs> at a young age, their heart is really not kind really. <laughs> uh, maybe because of their family background, upbringing, or many, many other issues. I do not know what trauma they've gone through. But not all children are kind at heart. Some grow up because of very dire, dire circumstances. They are forced to mature at a very uh, young age. Uh, then they look at the world very different. So my answer to all this is we have to pray for our children. And it's a, it's a forever duty, you know. You've got to just keep praying. And sometimes I also ask God, you know, God, <laughs> this is beyond me. Can you teach me how to pray for my child? And uh, yeah, so I, I guess this is the best solution. And just be aware, look out for your child and your children. Speak, Be the voice to speak up for them. Don't be afraid to speak up for your child. I want to challenge you parents, don't keep quiet. Because if you don't speak up for them, they got no avenues. And they always think life is unfair. No one speak up for them. But you speak up reasonably, not go, go to school and school, start scolding all the teachers, right? <laughs> I don't do that. I, but in my subtle language, I think they get the point. You don't take control, I'll take control. So, okay, are we ready for tonight? Wow, 20 minutes just on child relationship and I'm a uh, holy moly, 11.30 ready. <laughs> this is the Cinderella, Cinderella moment for me. Okay, today, you know, uh, kind of reaffirm one of the thesis that we are working on, which is the energy stocks, and kind of uh, made me very, very excited. I saw an opportunity uh, during, the, uh, during the class. And by, by the way, you guys got to know how bad it is for me, right? It's, um, what do I mean by how bad for me it is? Uh, today, we have a combined class in Harvard Business School, about 100 students in a large auditorium. And, you know, I think this three weeks is taking a toy on me because I'm doing multiple things at, at the same time as well as attending the class, <laughs> as well as tackling my, my son's issues at school. Uh, so today in the auditorium, <laughs> according to my classmate, I, I doze off and I not only doze off, I snored. <laughs> and everybody turned and looked at me. Then when they looked at me, I just opened up my eyes. And I didn't know that I snored, you know. They, I snored and then they looked at me. But by the time I opened my eyes, then I say, how come all of them looking at me? So after the class ended, they say, hey, Clement, you realize not? Just know you snored in the class. <laughs> Oh, that's how bad it is, okay? I'm I'm physically <laughs> I'm physically tired. Um I think it's uh it's not the how to describe it, it's not the physical tired, it's the mental fatigue. There are many things going through my mind right now as I design the new business for spiking. 
<laughs> oh, it's so bad. <laughs> and everyone is awake except me. I, I don't know. I, I <laughs> or maybe they are all like looking at the teacher, but they are actually sleeping. But you know, but they got a better control of their body. <laughs> they didn't snore. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Why am I telling you this? Uh? Oh, because <laughs> let's go back to a serious note right now. Okay, today uh, in the middle of the class, you know, I uh, uh, I was I was excited. So halfway watching the class and all that, you know, um, I saw this uh, big movement which kind of affirmed our thesis over the past two to three days. I've been talking about energy sector over the weekend from Saturday, Sunday, and today is Monday, right? So there's some movement right now. And let me share with you my screen at this moment. Here we go. <laughs> Ding. Okay, where is my chart? Here we go. All right. Ding, ding. Okay. So this is the one that, um, uh, you know, Occidental today has some movement. Now, if you look at a chart like this, you wouldn't feel it until you you turn it on the hold on a minute. You turn on the five day. Go and turn on the five day candle right over there. Right? Bang bang. And here we go. So I'm gonna turn it on. Click on five day. And in my morning class, I saw this big movement. Right? This was the big movement I, I saw. Oops. Here we go. Hang on a minute. So this was the big movement. Go all the way up. Boom. From 73 to 77, $4 movement, all right? So I was thinking between taking profits versus taking a trailing limit order. So if I took an instant profit back then, my Profit dollar value is about $50,000 net net profit, all right? And that's about maybe 30% profit uh, return in a very short time. I think less than three days, all right? So I decided not to. And I need to use today's class to explain to you how do you decide when to take profit versus when to place the trail limit, all right? There's this tool that we are balancing all the time. And of course, it's very exciting for us every time we go in, go in today, get out tomorrow, go in today, get out tomorrow. Dang, dang, one day we hit between 5 to 100% profit return, right? You have been taught and you compound this kind of profit, you kind of accelerate the growth of your capital. But at what point in time do we kick in the trail limit? So this is where I want to use this opportunity to share with you my thoughts about this issue. And I'm going to bring out the one year right now. Okay. So this is the one year chart. And we have been formulating our thesis on energy sector. And we say, okay, this guy has more room to grow. And, and because for this particular case, incidental, we expect that Warren Buffett will eventually make an acquisition offer that must be above the, must be above the prevailing market price. So we expect you offer a price around $100, right? So we hang on to this thesis. As a result, when I'm sitting on nice profit of 30%, I place a trail limit such that if the order kicks in to sell, I will sell at my break-even price because I want to create a larger bandwidth to capture more profits, all right? So technically, to explain this is um, I usually only do it in the class, not on the YouTube, but I, I share with you the concept, all right? So I want you all to take note of this. And obviously today, you know, the, again, everybody kind of uh, been frightened off by a uh, Fed chair and the market is not like moving aggressively, aggressively. So I'm going to come back right over here. And, you know, uh, this is the part usually I... Oops, hang on a minute. Usually, I uh, go to the CNBC and let you see for yourself, even though one day has passed through, very little has been accomplished. Right? What do I mean by that? Here we go. Right? 
So in the US market hours, the market is closed right now. So I put this back. This is CNBC. And then you will just need to compare to get a feel. This is the part most people don't understand. Teacher, how do you know the market has moved dramatically yesterday or today versus any other days? All right. So I'm going to show you the three steps how to go about doing that. Step one, we knew that there are three red indices right here. So we have a red market as the closing bell on a, on a Monday, right? So you can also see right over here, stock futures rise slightly after second straight negative session, right? So this is the first part I go in to zoom in. Then as I zoom in that, that part, the second place I go in to zoom in right now is always to understand what is the main headline. Main headline is my red box that I draw in front of you right now, right? So everybody's just really excited about, you know, the next upcoming launch from Apple. That is the main, main headline. Then step three, you just have to compare this part here. You will see there's so little mention of any other, any other mention of news, all right? That is what I call under latest news, all right? Focus on this part. And I start to scroll down. You can see just by reading at this moment, right? Not many stop moving news that will trigger in the marketplace, right? So you get cuckoo news like US needs miracle to avoid recession, economist Stephen Roach says. And then you go scroll down, YouTube appoint somebody, scroll down, uranium energy, that's about it. Chart suggests the stock market could have a solid finish to the, to the year. So uh, Gene Kramer holds the same thesis as us. We believe there's a V-shaped recovery uh, by the end of this year, right? So that is uh, that's the same thesis that we have. Power means business on inflation, so avoid money losing companies. And this is the proposition about looking for cash rich, cash generating companies today. We have to be very stringent on this. Little mention about te a Tesla. And then we're going rate hikes won't bring down inflation as long as spending stays high. And this is the part kind of um, deja vu of how I went to the premium outlets and see for with the first hand. Holy moly, the Americans are buying like crazy, man. Everybody like carrying big bags coming out of the each of the brand store. It's like nothing is happening, affecting them about recession. Okay. So that's the re resilience of the American economy. But it runs contrary to Fed chairman ideal of bringing inflation down to 2%. So that's something we got to deal with. And you see, I just keep scrolling, scrolling down right there. No mention of individual stocks, right? Expect Apple to show four new phones. That's about it. Dun, 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 dun. Nothing else really. It is so quiet. Can you see there? It is so quiet. So when we have a quiet market, don't rush. What you should read, what we should be doing at this moment is to review those trades that we put in but didn't get triggered. All right. So we got quite a number of trades that we put in the price, negotiated really, really hard, but it didn't get triggered because the price starts to run up already. So those are the trades I'm going to review tonight. I have not sent out the notification for yesterday. I have not sent out the notification for today, which is my Monday. I'll be doing so after we finish the uh, YouTube live stream. Hopefully I don't fall asleep and I got... I got two major case journals that I need to read up. <laughs> and, I and I pray I don't snore in the class tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, I was trying to really hold myself. Eh, and, and then the next thing I snore. <laughs> That's because I'm um, thinking so much about, you know, uh, all the great ideas I learned from Harvard Business School to apply in our in our spiking business right um just to give you a feel of it you know um for those who take part in the harvard business school opm program uh, many of them are very very established entrepreneurs i mean really top notch uh, international reach and some of them run public companies 
some of them are into multi sectors, not just one particular sector, right? So it's really, really amazing bunch of entrepreneurs, uh, you know, dedicating their lives to building up business, taking on the risk and all that. So that's the journey I have to go through as well. Not just as your teacher. And I think, you know, I've, I've um, always tried to innovate as a teacher to give you my best. But I also think that I really need to improve a lot, a lot more as the CEO of Spiking. All right. So that's the reason why I have to come here and relearn. <laughs> so I'm right now, I, I'm equipped with so many tools. I have to process quite a lot of information. And uh, one more week to go. I hope I survive this week. No, no more snoring. <laughs> and, and they've been doing a case study on Singapore this week. Uh, it's a very, very long case study. And kind of uh, everybody have certain myth or misconception about our, my country, Singapore. And I hope to address that this week when, when we work on a case study on Singapore. And let me ask all of you, which uh, before I ask my fellow learned classmates in Harvard Business School, and I'm going to type it out right here, see who gets the answer, right? What, what is the secret of Singapore's success? All right, I post out this question in front of you. And I'm not too sure who, who are the Singaporeans watching right now. Majority of you probably not non-Singaporeans. And based on what you know about my country, Singapore, maybe I ask you, what do you think is the secret of Singapore's success? Of course, we've got many, many secrets, all right? But I always chase to the root cause. If we tackle this root cause secret, the rest is easier to solve, all right? So let me play some music. Bang. What is the secret of Singapore's success? All right. So uh, Jeffrey says that it's a um, meritocracy. Kelvin says that LKY leadership, but LKY not around with us anymore. That's our founding father, Lee Kuan Yew. Uh, good governance from Wilson. And uh, Jeanette, at all times stay... I, know, I can't see that word. Uh, at all times stay united. Uh, I don't think Singaporeans are really... Not all 100% are united. All right, We still have... Uh, in every population there will always be one camp that's anti-government, right? So, uh, but overall, we are uh, we are united. Yes, you can say that, all right? Uh, political stability, a vision, and all these are very, very good answers. I'm going to give you my answer right now. The secret of Singapore's success, why uh, from 1965 until today, we are able to grow so fast, phenomenal speed. And the answer is this. So far, none of you got it right, you know. <laughs> I look at the chat chat. None of you got it right so far. Ready? And the answer is this. We really go all out to fight against corruption. That is the secret of Singapore's success. And as you know, we are surrounded by very, very big neighbors. And in marketing terms, you should ask, we should ask, what is the USP, unique selling point of Singapore? We are anti-corruption. That made us stood out. And because of that, we can, you know, from this very first important ideology to begin with, we can spread out to talk about meritocracy, Political stability, corporate governance, human talent, vision, forward thinking, race unity, education. But all that will not happen if we don't have a big fight against corruption. That is our USP. All right. So I hope you all recognize that. And that gives foreign investors so much confidence to invest in our country. Now, 
Now, of course, they also invest in other countries where it's very corrupt. Then they have to they have to live with the fact that whether they can sleep well at night or not. You come to Singapore, you don't have to struggle with that. And in fact, I'm going to tell my my classmates in Harvard Business School this week. If you come across any corrupt officer in Singapore, I'll tell you where to email to my Prime Minister. <laughs> and most of you are not aware of the fact that in Singapore, every government agency, starting from the ministry, take for example, Ministry of Manpower, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Defence, every ministry from that top level downwards, we have what we call a quality service manager. Every single ministry in Singapore's uh, uh, corporate structure. I use the word corporate, basically we run like a corporation, right? And this quality service manager, fit, give, he, will give, he or she will give feedback directly to the prime minister. He's the filler on the ground. So if you have any grievance and you feel any you know, government officers are not giving you a fair hearing or there's some abuse of the system, please write to the quality service manager. And I can sure, assure you, or every urgency will re reply to your email. <laughs> okay, so that's how we work and uh, very, very transparent. And I think that is the success of Singapore Story. So I'm thank you. I'm very, very grateful for all of you for hanging out with me today. Sorry, your teacher is not as level best. Just forgive me. <laughs> I have to deal with a teacher's meeting and uh, my head is already spinning right now. And I uh, and I, uh, I have to make a commitment. I'll sign up the trade notification after this uh, live streaming so that I, I, don't, I don't owe you all anymore. <laughs> okay. So thank you so much. I hope you learned some nuggets today uh, about handling your child and about the energy sector, about going after those trades that we missed out previously, we look at the pricing again and refire them out once again. Thank you, everybody. And I have to say good night and good morning to you. May God bless all of you. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you.